Hi, everyone. Jeff Cote here with VotingTechTalk.com. Uh, pleasure to have you all here and listening in to a fellow voters question. Kyle asks, that's why I got my reading glasses so. on. I have a separate 24 volt battery bank for my bio thruster. I know that it gets charged on shore power because when I leave the dock, it works. Okay. However, I was at anchor for quite a few days, and when I used the thruster, it worked and then stopped. Someone said that it may be it may not be charged by the generator. How would I check this? Oh, Kyle, I love this question. First of all, good on you for being curious. You know, curiosity is everything in life because it provides us answers, right? And answers take the, the mystery out of many things away. It's great. You're right. By the way, for many of you that have a bow thruster in your boat, that bow thruster most likely was a add-on either at the factory as an option and or after the boat was sold by a dealer or a boat yard. And the reality is that it's probably not as integrated as you would think, electrically speaking. Okay, so that's the first thing. Come to that realization is that bow thrusters are generally not something that's a standard piece of equipment on many boats. And since it's not a standard piece of equipment, it doesn't get the same level of attention and detail that many other pieces of your boat would get, like an AC panel or a DC panel. That's going to have somebody with pretty deep knowledge signing off on the design, right? It's reality. They just have to. It's too much liability. It's too important. But the bow thruster is an afterthought or a stern thruster. And so a lot of those things electrically are not done maybe the way that you and perhaps myself would do it. So generally, the battery charger uh, bow thrusters are either 12, 24, they could be whatever voltage, and they're generally far away from the battery bank. So what commonly happens, which is in the case of Kyle, which that is normally the easiest solution, is the boat builder or a dealer will install a small battery charger directly beside the battery bank or the thruster, and they're going to plug in, in an AC outlet that might be designated as battery bow thruster charger, or it might be simply designated as, it might be connected on another circuit related to outlets in the forward cabin, right? So not every one of those circuits is actually labeled on the AC panel, although I think there's an argument for why it should, certainly to be able to know what breaker it is, uh, but not always, but it should. It all too often, and this is definitely the case, especially when the voltages are different between 24 and 12, your house is at 12 and your uh, thruster is at 24, very few of those battery banks will get a charge from the alternators, right? So the engine, the engines might be outputting via the alternators 12 volts. Uh, and so then you would need different devices to convert the voltage to 24, right? You would need a DC to DC uh, charging converter and they exist, but most people, and those are relatively new. So most of us won't have that device on board. And if you do, congrats, you're one of the lucky ones. If the battery voltages are the same, um, then yeah, it's possible that uh, you're gonna have battery combiners, but battery combiners uh, on thruster banks can be problematic uh, because of unexpected high current over the link, the parallel link, uh, when the batteries are heavily discharged or under use. And that might cause, um, fuses to blow unexpectedly or to trip, effectively negating the parallel link. And many of us won't know this until we realize that our thruster battery is simply dead. It never gets a charge anymore because the battery combiner and the fuse associated with the battery combiner fail. And that happens a lot, like all the time. Which brings me to my next point before the final point. If you're installing a bow thruster on your boat, or you have a bow thruster on your boat, I highly suggest that you install and have the bow thruster battery on a voltmeter somewhere on your dash, or even in the Ford cabin, install somewhere an ability to monitor the voltage of that battery. And all too often, I've seen people that don't monitor the voltage of that battery bank and end up with a dead battery bank because there's just no other way for that battery bank to communicate with the owner that it's in trouble. And that would be probably 95 to 99% of all of us that have bow thrusters do not have a battery voltage of that battery. We're just hoping that the battery's there and we're just hoping that it gets charged. And if we know, hope has very little place on a boat, especially when you can prepare 
and avoid the need for hope. And the last question uh, that Kyle asked is, well, if it works on shore power, how do I know that it's not working on generator? Now that's where it gets really weird. Um, generally an AC system has generator and shore being two options to power the AC panel, right? Generally the whole boat can be powered through shore or the whole through shore or generator. And you really don't have the ability of saying, oh, the generator only powers certain loads, but not all loads on the boat. That's, um, I don't think I've ever seen that. Possible, you could do it that way, but I've never seen that. Generally, the generator and shore are source A or B, and both sources can power the whole boat. So you would expect to have either the generator or shore. Now, why would running the generator not a recharge of battery? Well, it's possible that your battery charger is tiny. It's really possible. Undersize, very likely. Because when you connect to shore power, you have eons of time to recharge it. But when you're on the generator, you might be only running the generator an hour a day, two hours a day. And if your thruster is used a lot, that might be not enough to recharge it. And so I would make sure that, you know, that might be one of the challenges. It's not so much that your generator doesn't run your battery charger, is that maybe your battery charger needs to run for its current size longer. Or alternatively, you should look at what's considered a DC-DC charging converter so that when your alternators are running, right, i.e. when there's a charging voltage on your engine batteries, that excess power from those batteries that are receiving a charging voltage from your engines, send that excess power to your thruster battery bank. Even though they're 12, you could still get them at 24. And that would be my suggestion, Kyle. So great question. And thanks for all of you for listening in. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more <laughs> of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.